Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now, in this tutorial, we will be looking at uh, some features available in modules and uh, uh, modules and functions and even this can be uh, extended to subroutines also. Okay, and uh, we will be looking at uh, the option pa optional parameters and, uh, and the usage of save function uh, in Fortran. Now, now what I have here is that I have written a I have written a program, okay. The both the program and a module they are both written in the same script, same file. So doesn't matter even if this is uh, written entirely in a different file, even it doesn't matter. But anyway, what I've written here is that in, in this module fact, okay, I have a new variable called as counter, okay, and I use the save command over here. I'll explain you guys what what's going on, and then what I'm doing is that I've written uh, I've written one uh, factorial function. I okay, let me just raise this a little lower. Yeah, I've written a factorial function over here. Okay, now this entire function is on the screen. Okay, uh, it will it is taking two variables, n and c, but uh, and n is the one which is going to be used for doing all the uh, factorial calculation and all. Okay, but the C I've declared it as with the keyword optional. Okay, now uh, and uh, this loop takes care of all the factorial calculation by recursive processes. So this function is recursive. So I kept I kept I wrote the keyword over here and the function name. And since I'm using the recursion over here, what I'm doing is that I'm using this result keyword and this result parameter to define a new variable that which will be returning the value okay to different to show that this function is this function call is different from the result call okay and then in this program uh, it's exact it's a very simple program where and i use this uh this module name to include all the modules inside this to include all the functions and variables inside okay and then i'm defining three integers n nf and i okay and I'm setting the value counter equals zero. Okay, this integer which is available in the module, I'm setting it to zero over here, and then I'm getting the value of n over here, and I'm doing a within this do loop, I'm calculating the factorial of each and every value of i. Okay, and I'm printing a factorial of each and every value of i from one to n, and then I'm printing them over here, and then finally I'm printing the total the counter the counter variable here. Now okay enough of the walkthrough now i'll go with a little detail uh, with i'll give you a background of what's going on see sometimes in for programs you might be required to enter some optional parameters suppose uh, uh, when you guys saw in one of the previous programs wherein we used the you know write command okay what happens is that many times we uh, many times to print them in the screen we use this uh, uh, operation wherein we say there isn't any uh, there isn't any unit there isn't any file to look at or unit to look at and there isn't any uh, format to write or there we are not using any advanced advance at all okay but but to be honest this function is not taking only two parameters it is taking multiple parameters inside like unit format enamel uh, advance and several others but by but by default Okay, for using simple processes, it uh, we if, even if we don't enter those values inside, it will just work out fine. Why? It's because this. It's because this uh, all the functions in Fortran, okay, some of the inbuilt functions in Fortran and stuff have optional parameters. Meaning, even if that if, if those parameters were included, the process is done in a slightly different manner but if it's not done the process is done in a slightly uh, process is done in a differently okay so if you want if you want that if you want that kind of uh, thing to be included in your programs then you need an optional parameter over here okay and uh, to define uh, in, a, in your into your in a function or a subroutine that you're entering an optional value inside okay uh, you, you have to use that in the definition you have to include all the subroutines you have to include all the you know all the values in the subroutine in the subroutines sorry in this functional subroutine 
that uh, uh, argument list which you see over here and then you have to define it explicitly that certain variables are optional using this keyword optional okay if this is not written then it'll, it will throw an error it, if it's if it's if it's written optional even when that value is not uh, plugged in or, or when the function is called without that value it will not throw an error but if it does if it is uh, put it will just do some more function some more values depending on the depending on the value okay and now let me exp okay now uh, ignore about this counter for a found counter for a second and even ignore about this counter for a second now let me ex give you guys an explanation as how to work how this works now ignore this counter variable over here now i'll walk you guys through uh, de define n over here with intent n and define c with c being an option variable i didn't define it with intent n nothing more and even if this is yeah that's okay that's okay not, not a big deal now uh, ignore this counter thing now, if this is just the usual fact, uh, except for this part and uh, this part, this program is just uh, the same uh, recursive factorial function, which I which I explained to you guys in uh, the basic Fortran program tutorial. It's just the same thing. Okay, if n is less than one, this if n is somehow less than or equal to one, then the function will then the function will return f f one. I mean the factor will to be one, whereas if it is greater than or e greater than one is going to call itself again with a re slightly reduced value of n and then when that result comes out it will multiply that result with the n and goes on with it so if even if you enter five it will go to four and then that will call three that will call two that will call one and when it calls one it returns one so when that comes one multiplied by two will, will return here then then two that uh, two multiplied by three will return three multiplied by four i mean uh, two multiplied by three, six, six multiplied by four, like that, and so on and so forth. It just call itself again and again and again, and does the job. Okay. Now this is how it happens. Now note it that only when this optional w value is given, this work, this part of the statement works. Now I'll explain this. Okay. This is when the function is called without the optional parameter. Now if you guys notice in this do loop, I'm calling this function fact without the do loop without the op optional parameter so if i were to compile this it works fine build this it works fine if i were to execute this okay it's asking me for a value so let me give say five fine if i give five what it's it's, it's showing me that the uh, value of one factor is one, one value of two factor is two three factor is six four factor is 24 five factor is 120 and so on and so forth uh, ignore this statement. This is working on the counter thing, but it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, so it works out fine. Okay, so if you guys notice, if this since this is done without the optional argument, it just works fine. But now, if I were to push put an optional argument like say one, any value for that for that matter, any value for that matter, as long as it's an integer, because I define this optional parameter to be an integer, so this has to the value that you pass over here is should be an integer but any value okay now since i pass it since i pass it now to know whether a function value is present in a uh, the file or not whether that va value has been input uh, plugged in or not there's this inbuilt intrinsic function called as present now what this what this will do is that it will give a logical output as to uh, as to true as like a true or false now if this if this value is if this c value is actually n in plugged in to, to the function okay now this present function will, will return true okay if it's not plugged in it will return false so this way you can use an if statement to do a decision making kind of stuff to do it now since in this process c if it's uh, we have an integer plugged in this one will be stored in c one will be stored in c and then this job uh, since this is present where here in this program that is present now what it will do is that this if statement becomes true and it will print the value of n in this current recursion okay and now even here if the value of n is present if this value if this c is present okay this if statement becomes true so this statement will be will be printed and if this is false if c is not present this goes away now uh, let me give let's to give you guys a comparison 
I'm not printing. I'm not printing the value here. So if I were to compile, build, and execute this, let me give a value four. Enter. It works fine. Now I have it here, and I now what I do is that I just give it one something. Now if I were to compile this, build this, and execute this again, okay. Now let me give this to be five. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, hold on. Okay, fine. Now, uh, if I were to compile this, build this, and execute this, now five, it works. Sorry. Now, it works. Now, what it does is that because this present is value is put in, and since it's present, it just prints this statement all over. It just prints this n values, n values, and all. And this way, you get an idea as to how this function is working on working on load. Now, if you guys notice, this way you're ge you're clearly getting an I indication that you have your a recursion is going on here. Okay. Then one, when the value is one, okay, the you now you're now you're in, you have a much you have a better proof that uh, this else statement of this if is not work this is not executed is rather work, work going here and is getting returned. And uh, you get a feel that now you're getting a proper feel that how this function is working. Now when you, when the end, when the i is two, okay, when the i value is two, it it goes over here and prints the value two, and then and then the recursion gets called and goes over here. When it goes over here, it prints n equals one and returns one, and that goes back and so on. So for in factorial three, for three factorial it goes to three, two, one. Okay, because of recursion, it just goes in the uh, descending order. From then, it returns back. From then, it returns back, and then does it like that. So, if you guys notice, sometimes using optional parameters will be very useful for debugging and checking whether your program is working nice or right, uh, right or wrong. Okay, and that's one of the features. And other, other than that, when you use optional parameters, you can use this for you know performing little uh, additional calculations or additional job or additional some other debugging stuff which you might have to work work it out or some additional default values okay if uh, certain values are not uh, plugged in properly you can use them uh, you can use them uh, with certain conditions and all and proceed with it also now let me look let me come to the last topic in this video last topic in this video the save function now suppose if you want uh, to access some variables inside a uh, in a provided in a module in a function there is a space facility available now what about what was i saying yeah variables inside a module all this time we were looking at the modules which have only functions inside it but there is this feature of saving variables also now if i were to okay now if I were to and com comment this out, okay, and run this, it'll it'll work fine. It'll work fine, okay. But there is this thing, okay. I'll explain. Now, if you use any variables inside, if you use any variables inside a module, that mo function that variable becomes accessible to all the functions and subroutines defined within the module. And uh, whenever you use a module, okay, whenever you whenever you use a module like uh, inside another program, all the contents, uh, all the contents, including the variables and uh, functions, all of them get used by the function directly. I mean, all of them get used by the program also directly. Okay, and that's why. Okay, ignore the save part for a moment. That's why when I included this integer counter. Integer count, integer counter. Okay, I'm using this counter variable here without even defining it inside the function. All right, S uh, that's because this is inter this counter is in uh, this count uh, this function is internal to the module, so this counter becomes kind of global, uh, kind of global to the function. Okay, and since I'm using this module inside this program, okay not only this function even this counter variable becomes a part of, becomes included to the program okay this way uh, you can access counter now what i'm doing what i'm doing in the counter variable is that whenever the uh, i'm setting in the function 
sorry, in the program, I am setting the initial value of the counter to be zero. Okay, I'm setting the initial value of the counter to be zero. And now what I'm doing here is that when I, is that okay, I am just increment incrementing the value of the counter to be one whenever a function is called. So whenever the factorial function is called either by recursion or by direct call function call, it doesn't matter. If, uh, as long as the program is running, the counter value gets in incremented regardless of which calls which. Okay, it doesn't matter the, whether the function calls it itself recursively or whether some other function calls it or it doesn't matter if, even if the program calls it again and again doesn't matter the counter variable just increments every increments by one unit every time the function gets called okay and that value is kept in a global memory and kept in a global memory kind of and then it gets printed over here so if I were to run compile build and run this okay if I have to click 5 okay this n value is n value is 1, 2, and all. These are because we entered this optional parameter. And if you guys notice at the bottom, okay, this factorial function is called 15 times in total. If you guys want to count it out, it gets called 5 times, okay, one, once through the, through the program and the remaining 4 through recursion, okay, so it gets called 5, five times for the 5 factorial. Uh, three, four times for the four factorial, three times for three factorial, two times for two factorial, one time for one, only once for the zero factorial, sorry, for the one factorial. So ultimately this program gets uh, called by, it's called, I mean this function gets called 15 times in the total execution. So you're getting a result, so you're getting a result as counter, you're getting a result, count, result with counter equals 15 and that is getting printed at the bottom, okay. This way, if you have certain functions in a program, you can use it. Some certain variables in a program or a module, you can use it. And I'll explain one more stuff, one more topic over here: the save function, the save command. Now, what does this save command does is that it this makes the command. I mean, this makes the variable. This makes the variables defined within the function or within the variable. Uh, within the function or a, mo uh, or, a or a module or a program uh, completely global meaning suppose if I were to write a new function okay uh, a new function or new variable and if you want to pass this value to there and something of that sort okay this save function will be useful okay it kind it kind of makes it every all the job completely completely global meaning this counter because when I as I put it in save okay even if I wanted to access this counter value in some other function or some other program some other module in some some other function in some other module this counter can be accessed because I put this in save similarly if I write some other value over here and I use the save command that set of value or values can be you know made accessible to all the programs also okay well that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial yeah, maybe in the next tutorial I'll explain you guys about the save function a little, a little more in detail okay with a uh, little more in detail and with that we'll be jumping to uh, with that concept in mind we'll be jumping into uh, a few more things regarding um, regard uh, regarding functions and subroutines regarding fun regarding functions and subroutines okay uh, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial bye